right. Well, welcome Boach to his fifth career World Series. Uh, and uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get you the microphone. Mm -hmm. And then it was the first question for Bruce. We'll start with Barry right here and then Bob. Oh, go ahead, Barry. No client. Hey, Bunch. Hey, Barry. How much different is it managing now than it was in your first World Series in 1998? It's really not any different. Uh, I maybe in the fact the first one. I mean, it's you know those are really nervous times, and you're still amped up now. I mean, this is it's a big moment, exciting moment. But uh, you know, your first time is always as that special memory that you're always going to have, and all of them are. But uh, so really, it's that beside that, you know, they're all the same. I think, and the excitement, uh, you know, you're anxious to get it going, and uh, you're just proud of your boys, and so it's uh, it's a good time. What about actual managing over the course of the season? It's a lot different managing now with analytics and all the things you have to take into account than it was back then, wasn't it? A little bit, a little bit. But, you know, even back then, we, you know, we wanted all the information we could get. I don't think that ever changes. Uh, you know, it just wasn't as deep as it is now. But I, I can go back when I first started at 95. I mean, we, you know, we wanted all the – information, the analytics, things that we could get. And my time in San Francisco, we used it more, I think, than what people think. But still, you, you it's got to be a blend. And uh, so it's the same thing now. And that, I think that's what works well for us, uh, you know, with our ops department, our, our coaching staff, myself. Uh, it, it's important that I think you use both. Claudia standing on your right here. Hi, Bruce. Congratulations. Right here. <laughs> Hi. How important has defense been for the Rangers this postseason? How much has great defense or errors turned the momentum of games? Yeah. Well, I think if you look at both clubs, uh, it's it's amazing how close we are as far as errors. Uh, both teams play very well defensively. and. I've always been a big uh, believer pitching defense. Uh, we talked about it this spring. Every team does. I know that. But, you know, that has to show up every day. The hitting and pitching is going to come and go. But we need to catch the ball. And, you know, don't beat ourselves. And these guys have really done an incredible job of coming out every day and working on their defense, separating their defense from their offense when that's not going well, and doing what they can to help the pitcher get outs. Put Bob right here on your right poach. Hey, Bruce, during the uh, playoffs, the Diamondbacks were kind of used being motivated by every pick and against them, wondering how an 84, you know, when teams should be there. Did you guys use anything like that for motivation, being the underdog in all three series and struggling there in September? Uh, you know what, Bob, we, we really didn't talk about it. We, we weren't concerned with what people thought of us. You know, we, we thought we were good. We we thought we belonged, and then we thought we could win, and that's how we looked at it. So didn't really get concerned with, you know, what the outside or the big pundits or experts thought about us, and so that's how we approached it. A second row, but to your left, Levi. So I want to follow up on the defense question because watching this team the last however many years, the defense has been significantly better this year. Um, I know that you did research before you took this job. When you when you came to spring training this year, did you have a plan in place like to to improve the defense? What was your process for? Emphasizing? Well, really, more than anything, just work. I mean, we we got work to do. We got to get better. Um, just to give you an example, Nate Lowe, you know, that was an area he needed to work on, and um, I don't think we take credit for it. Nate go, went out there and worked every day. Uh, he was pushed by Marcus, uh, and that's part of the deal, too. You know, you want each other to hold each other accountable to going out there and uh, doing things right, getting ready, and getting better as a player, whether it's at the plate, defensively, uh, you know, wherever it is. So, But, you know, I can remember my early conversation with uh, Josh Young. Hey, I know the hitting's going to come and go. Hey, but we, we got to catch the ball down here. That's going to be our focus, and th this kid ended up being – you know, even more advanced than I thought defensively. And uh, he's done a great job. But really, 
everybody. Corey's solid. I knew that. And I knew Marcus was solid. And then you look behind the plate, Jonah Heim, like you could see he was coming into his own. And, and um, he just really has done a great job of handling the staff, throwing, blocking, doing all, all those things you like from a catcher defensively, especially the receiving end. And then just a quick follow-up on that, especially this year. You know, the rules have changed. There's no shift. How important has your defensive analytics department been in you know, positioning the guys and making sure that they're in a position to succeed with the rules having changed a little bit? Right. No, it's, they play a critical role in helping us be in the right spot. And, you know, I have to mention uh, Ragsdale, Corey, he, he does a great job of uh, putting these guys in – the right position. Uh, Will's got the uh, infield, I mean outfield, and uh, so really we're all here because we work together well and uh, that's the reason we're here. These guys uh, just did a great job being relentless uh, with their preparation and work. Other questions for Bruce in the fourth row on your left, Bruce. Hey uh, Bruce, why did you want Tony Beasley on your staff and what's he brought to your club? Yeah. I didn't know Tony, uh, but I had heard nothing but great things from mutual friends. Uh, you know, what a great baseball guy he is, what a positive influence he is, and you know, how popular he was with the team. And so I have a, we have a, a mutual friend in uh, Northern Virginia. He said, don't you do anything with Beasley. So I, I had to listen to him. But no, but on the serious side, no, t just too many good things said about him. And uh, so I, I was looking forward to meeting him, and we hit it off right away. I mean, if you can't hit it off with uh, bees, you're, you know, you're the problem. <laughs> About five rows back, straight in the middle there. Hi, Bruce. Uh, it's Chris, question for another, another coaching step. Uh, Will Benamble, could you describe his presence in your club and uh, his job title is associate manager? What does it actually do? Gosh, I'm sorry, man. I I got bad ears. I'm getting old. What? Yeah, Will, Will, Will Venable, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Will Venable. Will Venable, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Will and I have been across the field from each other for a while. Uh, back when he was with San Diego, uh, I was with the Giants, and then he was with the Cubs. So, you know, I've known Will, you know, not real well, but you know enough to know what a good man he is, what a good baseball guy he is, and. Uh, so when I came over here, his name was brought up as a possibility, and I was excited about it. Uh, you know, I think he's an up-and-coming manager. Uh, um, he's the guy that's kind of helped me keep things organized. Uh, uh, so I, I'm lucky to have him. One row further back on your left. Uh, hi, Bruce. Um, Jack Summers from Fan Nation. The exactly. Tory Lavello spoke before the game um, about his admiration for you as a manager and as a person um, in such glowing terms. And I was just wondering, you've managed over 60 games against him since he's gone to the Diamondbacks. Um, what are some of your thoughts about his style of managing and the challenges that presents for you in the other dugout? Yeah. Uh, well, back at Tory, uh, I, I think a lot of him. I had a chance to managed uh, quite a few games as you mentioned he's he's on top of everything he, he knows the game uh, you know it's not it's not a situation where he's uh, he, even when he first started managing that, that you didn't think he was ready this guy uh, has done a great job for them and you look at where they've come similar to us uh, you know that's uh, Tory's uh, footprint is on this club the way they play the ball they uh, play the game uh, they 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 Hustle. They, 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 you know, they're aggressive on the bases. Uh, they do the little things, and I, that's that's Tory. Uh, I think uh, leading the way there. So no, I, I have so much respect for him too. One last quick one for Bruce before Nate comes in. We'll finish up with Jeff. Uh, um, do you have a game two starter, and do you anticipate that the roster will remain the same as it was for the LCS? Yeah, we'll uh, finalize this roster here soon. We're going to have a workout here. Uh, not that that's going to determine it, but after that, then we're going to huddle up and uh, we'll, we'll come up with our roster. Uh, uh, we're not going to name our game two starter yet. Uh, I'll, I'll name that tomorrow. Boach, thanks so much. Okay, Appreciate thank it. you.